Hi everyone. Today we are going to study distance between two vertices in a graph and centers in a tree. In a connected graph denoted by G, the distance which is denoted by D, Vi comma Vj, where Vi and Vj represent any two random vertices and d vi comma vj represents the distance between those two vertices named as vi and vj so in a connected graph g the distance d vi comma vj between two of its vertices vi and vj which i just said is the length of the shortest path between them so what is the distance between two vertices the distance between two vertices is found by finding the shortest path between those two vertices. Now, why do I emphasize on shortest path? Shortest path means the path which has the minimum number of edges. Especially if I talk of a graph, you all know that in a graph, it is possible to have more than one path between any two pair of vertices. So it is uh, obvious that a graph may have more than one path between a pair of vertices. So in that case, among all those paths, the path which is shortest, that means the path which is having the minimum number of edges is considered as the distance between those two vertices. This definition of distance between any two vertices is valid for any connected graph and not necessarily a tree. So when I talk of distance between two vertices, it holds for both a graph which is not a tree and also for a tree. So the technique for finding out the distance between any two vertices is same whether you talk of a general graph or whether you talk of a tree but the only condition is that it should be a connected graph when i say tree it is quite obvious that a tree is a connected graph so there is no question of that but when we talk of a general graph then we must emphasize that we find the distance among vertices only in a connected graph if I consider this particular graph, now let's look at this graph and if I want to find out the distance between the two vertices V1 and V2 of this graph, right? right? So if I want to find the distance between vertices V1 and V2, so first of all you must know that this is a graph and not a, this is a general graph and not a tree. Of course tree is also a graph but such a graph which does not have any circuits obviously which is connected graph and between any pair of vertices there does not exist more than one path that is the condition of a tree but in case of a graph you know we can have more than one path between any pair of vertices between any two pair of vertices so when i talk of finding the distance between v1 and v2 and since you can see that this is not a tree this is a general graph so there is a possibility of having more than one path between the vertices v1 and v2 so to find out the shortest distance between v1 and v2 why why did i say shortest distance because the distance between any two pair of vertices is equals to the shortest distance between them so to find out the distance between vertex v1 and v2 i will first of all have to find out all the available paths between v1 and v2 so if I consider the available paths between V1 and V2, then you can clearly see the first path is V A uh, edge A and edge E. Because to reach from vertex V1 till vertex V2, you have to traverse along edges A and E and then you can reach from vertex V1 to vertex V2. So this is one path. This dashed line is one such path. Then the other path is A c and f along this dash lines also you can reach from vertex v1 to vertex v2 which is via edges a c and f then third path is 
via edges B and C and then finally E. So this is third path B, C and E. Then another path is via edges B and F. So if you start from B1, travel across edge B, then edge F and finally reach B2. Then the fifth path is via B, G and H. So from V1 like this you go, then G, then H and then you finally reach V2. So this is the fifth path. And finally the sixth and last path is B, G, I and K. Right? This is also one path via the edges B, G, I and K. This is one path and then there is one more path which is via B, G, I and J. So, there are tot uh, in total seven available paths to reach from vertex V1 to V2. So, since we are considering a graph and in a graph as we know there is a possibility of finding more than one path between any two pair of vertices. So, first of all we will have to figure out all those available paths. Once we find all the available paths then among those paths we will find out the one with the shortest path. So, here you can clearly see these are the paths that we have found in this particular graph from vertex V1 to V2. One path is having edge AE, then edge ACF, BCE, BF, BGH, BGIK, BGIJ. So these are all the available paths from vertex V1 to vertex V2 and that I just, I have just shown you through the graph. Now our task is to find out the one with the shortest path. Shortest path means the one with the minimum number of edges. Rest in all the paths you can see either we have three edges or we have four edges. Like here BG, IK we have four edges. Again BG, IJ we have four edges. In other cases here we have ACF three edges, BCE three edges and BGH three edges. So as I said in uh, most of the paths we have either four edges or three edges. These are the only two paths. One is this. And other is this. These are the only two paths where the number of edges is 2 which is lesser than all other available paths. So hence I can say that I have two shortest paths. One is AE and the other is BF. So since there are two shortest paths AE and BF each of length 2 hence the distance between vertex V1 and V2 is 2. The distance between vertex V1 and V2 is 2 which is the length of the shortest path between the vertex V1 and V2. So this is how you can find out the distance between any two vertices either in a graph or in a tree. Now in case of a tree as you know there is exactly one path between any two vertices. Because the condition itself of a tree is that there must not exist more than one path between any two pair of vertices. Right? First of all, there must exist a path between every pair of vertices in the graph. And also, there must not exist more than one path between any two pair of vertices. So, in the case of tree, the determination of distance is much easier. Because the task of finding out all the available paths is ruled out in the first step itself because you know that no more than one path will exist in a tree. So this headache of finding the available paths is ruled out in the first step itself. So hence finding out the distance between any two vertices in a tree is much easier as compared to a graph. Now if you consider this tree, here you can see we have four vertices E, B, A and C. Now to find out the distance between any two pair of vertices, it is very easy. There is only one available path and that will itself be the distance between those two vertices. So like for example, if you have to find out the distance between vertex A and B, it is 1 because you have one edge between these two vertices and there is no other path other than this. Similarly, if you want to find out the distance between vertices A and C, the distance between vertices A and C is 2 because there are two edges between A and C. So, the distance is 2 and there is no other path.
path between these two vertices. So calculating the distance in case of a tree is quite simpler as compared to a graph. Similarly, for uh, vertices C and B, the distance is 1. Vertices E and A, the distance is 2. Vertices E and C, the distance is 2, which is basically what? Which is the number of edges included in the path from the vertices. So, no, number of edges from A to B, 1. Number of edges from A to C, 2. Number of edges from C to B, 1. Number of edges from E to A, 2. Number of edges from E to C, 2. And this is how you calculate the distance. Now we have seen how to calculate the distance bet, uh, between any two vertices either in a tree or in a graph. Next we will study the center of a tree. How do we find the center of a tree? But before we study the center of a tree we must know what the eccentricity of a vertex is. Because this eccentricity of a vertex will help us in finding the center of a tree. So what is the eccentricity of a vertex? The eccentricity of a vertex which is denoted by EV, right? E stands for eccentricity and V represents that particular vertex whose eccentricity we are finding. So the eccentricity EV of a vertex V in a graph G is the distance from V to that particular vertex which is farthest from V in the graph. So basically eccentricity is nothing but the distance from the vertex V whose eccentricity we are trying to find to that vertex which is farthest from V in the graph and this gives you the eccentricity of that particular vertex. Mathematically it is represented like this. EV that is eccentricity of a vertex V is equals to the maximum distance from vertex V to that particular uh, is equals to the distance between vertex V from that particular vertex which is farthest from V. So hence it is denoted by max V1 in VI in G. So VI is this particular vertex which belongs to the graph itself and is farthest from V. So hence maximum distance of vertex VI from V from uh, maximum distance of vertex V from the vertex VI of the graph, right? So in simple language, eccentricity is nothing but finding out the distance of that particular vertex from the vertex in question, which is farthest from the vertex in question. So if V is the vertex in question, that is, if we are finding out the eccentricity of V, then it can be find out by finding out the distance of that particular vertex, which is farthest from V in the graph. A graph with minimum eccentricity, the vertex with minimum eccentricity in a graph G is called the center of G. Right. So now you know how to calculate the eccentricity of a vertex. So out of all the uh, available eccentricities, the vertex with minimum eccentricity will then be called the center of the graph. So if I consider this particular a tree, E, it has the vertices E, B, A and C. So the eccentricities now we can easily find out. The eccentricities of the four vertices are here like this. So the farthest vertex which is from the farthest distance from vertex A. If I have to find the eccentricity of vertex A, then I have to find the vertex which is farthest from A. So the vertex which is farthest from A is either E or C. In any case, the number of edges between E, A and E or A and C is 2. That means the eccentricity of A is 2. Similarly, if I have to find out the eccentricity of B, then I have to find a vertex which is farthest from B. So any three vertices here are the farthest one because there is no more vertex which is farthest beyond E, A or C. So the eccentricity of B would be either uh, with vertex E or with vertex A or with vertex C. So in any case, the eccentricity would be 1 here because you have one edge either from B to A or from B to uh, either from B to E or from B to A or from B to C. So the eccentricity of B is 
1. Similarly, the eccentricity of C, if you have to find out, then you have to find out the vertex which is farthest from C. So, either E is farthest from C or either A is farthest from C. In both the cases, there are two edges between C and A or C and E. That means the eccentricity of C is 2. Then if you have to find out the eccentricity of D, then you have to, uh, uh, sorry, if you have to find out the eccentricity of E, then again you have to find out the vertex which is farthest from E. So if the vertex farthest from E is both A and C, right? And the number of edges between E A is 2, the number of edges between E C is 2. That means in any case the eccentricity of E is 2. So this way we have found the eccentricities of all the vertices of this particular tree. So E A, eccentricity of A is 2, eccentricity of B is 1, eccentricity of C is 2 and eccentricity of E is 2. Hence I can say that vertex B is the center of the tree by because this is the vertex with the minimum eccentricity. And as I just said that if you have to find out the center of a tree then you have to find a vertex with minimum eccentricity in the graph and that would be called the center of the graph. So out of all the vertices the vertex with the minimum eccentricity here is B. So hence I can say that B is vertex B is the center of the tree. So this is how you can find out the eccentricity. Sorry, this is how you can find out the center of a tree. We will consider one more tree. Now in the figure, in this particular figure you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 vertices in total. And the eccentricities of all these vertices are written above them. So this is basically the eccentricity of this particular vertex. This is the eccentricity of this particular vertex. This, this, this. So all these labels that you can see are the eccentricities of the vertices associated. Right? So this vertex has eccentricity 3 because the uh, vertex which is farthest from this particular vertex is this vertex. If I consider this vertex and if I want to find out the eccentricity of this particular vertex, so I will have to find out the vertex which is farthest from this and I can clearly see this is the farthest vertex or this is the farthest vertex, right? So in both the cases 1, 2, 3 edges, 1, 2, 3 edges. That means the eccentricity of this vertex is 3. Similarly, in uh, in the same manner, we have calculated the eccentricity of all the available vertices here. So, now you can see that the minimum eccentricity we have is 2, which is of 2 vertices in this case. 2 vertices have minimum eccentricity in this particular tree. So, I can say that since this tree has two vertices having the same minimum eccentricity, hence this tree has two centers. So a tree will have either one or two centers. A graph in general has many centers. A graph may have many centers because as I said that there is a possibility of finding more than one available path between any two pair of vertices in a graph. So you can have more than two centers in a graph but a tree however has either one or two either one or two centers so this way you can find out the center of a tree